I'd like you to imagine that you're powerless, that you're someone who's marginalized and without a voice. I'd like you to imagine more specifically that you're a woman born into a lower caste in India and that you are poor and as if that's not bad enough that you are illiterate because you've been denied an education. What would you do in that situation to empower yourself and to protect your rights? That's a question I asked myself when I moved to India in 2008. And it was only two years later, in 2010, when I found an adequate answer to that question. It was when I met this woman. This is Sampat Pal. She's the commander-in-chief of an organization called the Galabi Gang, or the Pink Gang. Her organization counts 20,000 members, and they're drawn from the lowest strata of society. Sampa Pal is herself lower caste. She's poor, she's illiterate, she was married off at the age of 12 and had the first of her five children at 15. Like her, her members also come from a very poor and, and disadvantaged background, but yet, despite that, they've been able to achieve empowerment and they've been able to transition out of a state of victimhood into victory and triumph. The Pink Gang fight for women's rights. They do so through protests, through sit-ins and marches, and also occasional use of their sticks. The Pink Gang is based in a state of, of India called Uttar Pradesh. And to understand why these women exist, you really need to understand where, where they come from. Uttar Pradesh has a population of around 200 million people. That's the same population as Brazil. And yet, it's a state that exists in near lawlessness. In fact, the central government of India has described Uttar Pradesh as lawless. And a high court judge in India has described the Uttar Pradesh police force as the country's largest criminal organization. As you can imagine, living as a woman in Uttar Pradesh is challenging, it's dangerous, and it's very difficult. And despite that, these women, who come from the lowest of backgrounds, have been able to protect themselves and stand up for themselves by following a principle that is deceptively simple. And this principle is this, that it doesn't matter who you are or how powerless you are, if you unite with other people, then you become strong. There is incredible power in unity, even if you're uniting with people that have no rights themselves. Together, something quite remarkable happens. Suddenly, you're, you're empowered. The Galabi gang discovered the power of unity in their very early years. In fact, a few years before they even started their organization. Back in 2004, Sampat Pal was organizing what are known as self-help groups. A self-help group is a group of between 10 and 12 women, usually from very poor rural villages, who group together and pool money. They pool their savings together. And once they've pooled enough money, they become eligible for government loans. The Indian government just came up with this idea of self-help groups in order to lift millions of women out of poverty. And Sampat Pal was, was forming these self-help groups. And something rather special happened, is that the women who were part of these self-help groups became empowered through the fact that although on their own their savings were meager and they were insignificant, when they pooled their money together with other people, suddenly they, dis they discovered that they had a lot of possibilities. And they, they applied this principle of, of unity, of pooling resources and strength to other areas of their life that went far beyond just finances. They started approaching Sampat Pal with other problems in their life. For example, I'm being beaten by my husband, what should I do? Or the local district official is not giving me my pension, or he's not giving me my food rations, which I am eligible for because I live under the poverty line, what should I do? And Sampat Pal gave them a very simple answer. She said, do you see this hand? What do you think is gonna hurt our opponent more? If we hit them like this, or, if we unite and hit them like this. The, the message she was getting across was very simple. Together there is strength. And so at that day they decided, they took a vow, that they were going to 
collectively stand up for each other's rights. If one woman was being abused by her husband, then all of the other women would respond as well. And so it was that they would together march to the local uh, officers, the police stations, and demand change. They would demand to be heard. But there was, there was a sm small problem. Things didn't quite turn out as they expected. Because even though they were united and they knew that they were together and, and that there was solidarity within the group, that wasn't necessarily evident to everyone else. From the outside, they just looked like a group of ordinary women. And that's when they realized that they needed to be able to show, they needed to symbolize their unity in a really clear way. And that's when they chose the pink sari uniforms. Because they realized that there's, there's very few things that sy symbolize unity as much as a uniform. And the moment they put on that uniform, everything changed. They started to be listened to. The local officials started to, to pay attention. And slowly but surely, the Galabi gang grew and grew, and they took on everyone from local bandits to corrupt politicians to, to local rapists, you name it. Now, this might seem to you like a very obvious message, one that there is power in unity. But I can assure you that in India, there are serious obstacles towards unity. And the most serious of them is caste, which runs as a dividing line between communities. And there's very few, um, there's very few sort of symbols of this disunity as, as marriage, actually, because marriage is the institution through which the caste system is perpetuated. The majority of people marry within their caste in India, and if you choose to marry outside of your caste, you find that you are vilified, harassed, you might be rejected from your family, and in extreme cases, you might even face honor killings. And yet, the Galabi gang has, in this area of caste, managed to overcome this significant barrier. And I want to show you um, this image here, which symbolizes just how powerful um, what they're doing is. There's very, few, um, there's very few things that are as controversial in India as an inter-caste marriage. And yet the Galabi gang gives strength to, to couples like this to marry and to make vows in front of each other without shame and without hiding. And through this unity that the Galabi gang shows people from inter-caste marriages, they're able to, to not be afraid anymore, and they're able to, to stand up and, and not hide. And this, this, uh, this marriage took place on, on Valentine's Day 2010, and to me, it really just symbolizes the fact that, yes, through, through unity, there is an incredible amount of power, but there are serious obstacles towards us standing in solidarity with other people. What this couple has gone through is just one such example of the kind of obstacles we can face. They were threatened with death, they were on the run for many weeks, but it was only when someone else stood up beside them and said, we're with you and we're going to stand in solidarity with you, that they overcame that struggle. And that's, that's really my, my message to you today, and I think it's the message that, that the Galabi gang has that I think is relevant in India, but really across the world, that we can, we can, we can overcome um, the greatest barriers through, through uniting with other people. And despite it being controversial and difficult, if we succeed in doing so, the rewards are really great. Thank you.